Hello everybody and welcome back to Dicing with Death. For those of you watching live, sorry about the stream going down. Minor technical problems. They're totally solved. You are the technical problem. <laughs> I really am. Yeah. Right then, player. So, all right, DM. So uh, Devon approaches Kronos's crevice. Mm-hmm. And inside. to Belthara. Sits the massive ogre, the massive giant, fingering his amulets round his neck, he gazes down at you with some level of suspicion as you approach his cave, and the booming voice echoes out, Devon, you are paying homage to the greatest deity, the one who satiates the hunger of our hearts. The one who fills us with meaning, purpose, and direction. Why have you come to seek Felthara's blessing? Uh, greetings, father. Um, quickly racking my mind for an offering. I imagine he has little use for coin or anything like that, huh? Because his DM never gives him coin. <laughs> um. Um. I have come to borrow the troll heart that beats at the core of that fountain. I point behind him to the, uh, to the blood fountain. He the looks surprisingly at it. Mm -hmm. You wish to take the symbol of vengeance, mm. the blood that flows forth from your enemy by the helmet of your other enemy? Mm. You wish to undo the vengeance that you have wrought? ponders this come now you you are the what do you say symbol the you are the symbol of Delphara here mm. the altar will remain but uh, and I hope to Turn the beating troll heart. It shall anew. return. I hope. When my hunt is complete. Mm. The giant muses to himself. What is new with you? Please tell me you've left this cave recently. Do you merely sit here in contemplation? Those who have been wronged inevitably find me. And he grabs the amulet around his neck and says, this lures them to me. Those who have not but hatred for their wrongdoers in their heart. Find me here. They know where I am instinctively. I have little need to walk about, bandy about. That's the word I'm looking for. Be careful, Devon. Treat your apprentices well. Or you, they, you will find them at my doorsteps as your mistresses, apprentices have found their way. Fun looks questioningly at this. They came to you or they came to your forefathers? The servant of Atropos visited me came for my guidance. 
came to see what could be done about the horrors she endures. Yvonne smiles perhaps inappropriately at this. Knowing more about those horrors than any person could. ever needs to know. Mm -hmm. What did you counsel her? I, I counseled her. I counseled her that her time was limited, that she would reach her vengeance when she could walk effortlessly into her mistress's lair, and that it would come with a terrible price. And Devon's eyes go wide. <laughs> I fear for, well, I don't know. Someone's going to get hurt. What do you know of Atropos? I know her name, for you mortals tell me. But when I seek, sh seek the guidance of the stars I see nothing but void the name has nothing attached to it it is empty it is missing um I fear that I must leave post haste uh I may have inadvertently given Atropos's apprentice the sign she was waiting for. Are you so. sure this is inadvertently? Perhaps my fate was or perhaps my fate was guided by another without my knowledge. Mm. Devon goes to the altar and removes the troll heart from it leaving the altar more or less intact. The giant watches you. You get the and sense that if the giant was had more confidence in his own abilities or perhaps less confidence in yours, that there uh -huh. might be a struggle of some kind for this, but knowing full this, well who you are and I leave how. the uh, I leave the altar intact, right? The blood will just stop throwing it flowing. And it wasn't a major flow, right? It was a trickle. Mm -hmm. Devon scoops up or replenishes his vials of troll blood from the from the small pool. Mm -hmm. Takes a bit, and makes the uh, uh, glancing to uh, Kronos, makes the uh, appearances of prayer, and draws a little V um, on his chest. Mm -hmm. No. What? And takes the troll heart and the troll blood and leaves to uh, Necrot, but first uh, Atropos's cave to make sure no one got murdered after he left. Okay, it's a full day back to Atropos's cave, and or you were already walking for a while to get here, so uh, you won't was... reach it till well, the next night. Well, we don't know. We don't really know. It's been a few days, right? Or yeah, maybe we've been wandering the hills. Yeah, but it's definitely like a two-day journey to the cave and you didn't wake up here, so it'll be a day and a night and then sometime the next day to get back to Atropos's place. Sure. Um, and you will arrive back. Are the stairs still there? The crude pile of stones? Um, it seems that the they have fallen over and are just hmm. kind of knocked down. Must have been intentional, right? Although it was a crude stacking of stones, gravity was, or weather would not do this. Someone, you would need like an earthquake or some physical horizontal force to cause this. Hmm. Well, um, um, by the way, Devon is probably needing to periodically stab the troll hard or something to keep the troll from reforming. I don't know exactly how fast it regenerates, but. Mm hmm. You just stick a finger in each aorta, you know, and then just kind of walk around with it like this. Yeah. Um, Devon climbs probably, perhaps the old-fashioned way, maybe using some of the scattered stones as uh, 
as a boost, but he gets mm-hmm. up into the cave. Mm-hmm. Shouting, uh, Atropos? Apprentice? Is everything all right? Uh, there is Atropos sitting at the back of the cave, um, munching on some chicken wings or something. Is the it apprentice chicken, Neil? is nowhere to be seen. Is it chicken? Could be a big chicken. Atropos, what happened to your apprentice? Hmm. I told you, Devon, there are so many disappointments. So many. Devon shakes his head and takes a step back, leaving drips of blood. <laughs> Um, I think if Atropos doesn't stop him or say anything, he backs out of the cave and gets the fuck out of there. <laughs> um, she holds up a half-eaten, like, drumstick to you, you know, oversized drumstick, and sort of waves it in the air. Are you hungry? I'm not hungry for your meat, Atropos. <laughs> you can stay for lunch, my dear. I have other appointments. Mm-hmm. Don't wait too long before you come and pay your respects again. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, does Devon she... need to go to Necrot, or does he just go straight to... Do you need an apprentice? Going to witness? I don't think so. No. What do you think? What, what... Okay. I think that oh, it... I... These things can be done with and out without apprentices, and there are natural natural consequences for both options. Yeah. So, I'd always imagine bringing an apprentice, but uh, it doesn't necessarily <laughs> seem like I need one. I don't even know what I need to do. I can always go back and fetch an apprentice. No, oh, you're cold. Go by yourself, take an apprentice, whatever you feel is appropriate for the situation. Dark Deeds, how has Cassandra been taking to the uh, less savory aspects of wizardry? I don't know if I trust the new ones quite yet. Cassandra has not really been exposed to too many of these aspects. I think she became your apprentice after the troll heart was created. So she didn't really see the horrors of that. She's She's... mostly been doing like elemental stuff and spell building and tower building. And yeah, the elemental stuff has gotten, I don't know. It's getting gotten to some gray areas, right? We accidentally unleashed that earth elemental, which killed a few people. Mm Mm-hmm. And then there's the whole matter of like, do elementals have souls and agency? Is like the experiments we've been doing with them mm-hmm. ethical? Mm-hmm. And it's probably only going to get worse. Yeah, but, but I think up till now, Cassandra has taken to all the things very well, but there hasn't mm-hmm. been very much in the way of like dark magic yet. Yeah, Devon hasn't done much dark magic. I do feel like these things are best done with cabals, aren't they? Mm hmm. But uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I've been away for a while, so should at least stop by Necrot, right? At least. So he pushes. He pushes through, force marching, arriving at Necrot after sundown, slipping in through from the outskirts climbing over the hills and through the uh, through the vineyard on the north edge of town mm-hmm. and slipping into his uh, tower from the uh, from the back entrance mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, slightly bloodstained, disheveled, twigs mm -hmm. in his hair. Mm -hmm. He returns to his tower. Uh, well, there are your apprentices. Um, they're downstairs. I think your there must be some apartment building or um, structure where the apprentices sleep. I think Devon's old house, right? There was like, mm -hmm. he's probably relegated that to the apprentices, actually. That makes sense. Right? There was a little cottage that Akitos made, and I think the act, the tower was probably raised immediately next to that. Mm -hmm. So I think the apprentices have use of that cottage. The old house, yeah. The old house, and yeah, it was, I think it's sort of just like a one room little studio thing. But there was mm -hmm. like a cook pot and a stove, I'm sure, in there. We probably don't want to be mixing the, uh, the cooking that goes on in the wizard's tower with our actual food, do we? Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe I find them there. Or are they in the tower? You will find them down in the building, um, passed out. Passed out? It's, I mean, it's probably Eve. Well, you okay, said it was after dark, right? I force march, so yeah, maybe it is late mm -hmm. tonight. All right, then he will ignore them until morning and get cleaned up and packed up and ready to go. Unless... Uh, I guess he needs to rest after force marching, right? You probably. I was yeah. like, that would be a good scene. The uh, Your mad wizard master bursting in on you, sleeping in the middle of the night, and clutching a beating troll heart, telling you it's time come to go. Come with me. To, come with me to the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, he how needs mad? rest, though. Okay, he's, not, okay. he's not ready to uh, go. Okay. He uh, sticks a knife through the troll heart and leaves it uh, in his workshop somewhere. Cleans up in the Quanot. Mm-hmm. He's got a pool that diverts. And, uh... Um... Yeah. And cleans up and rests. All right. And... Next day? Yeah, the following day, after resting, replenishing his rations, Devon will uh, gather his apprentices. He's returned the from a uh, unexplained week-long absence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he tells them that uh, we are all going to go on a... Um, on an errand. Benefit, uh, oh, yeah, benefits your magical educations greatly. A soy immediately pops up with, "Oh, where are we going?" Into the bat brackish fen. So uh, lace your boots and pack some rations. You're not making me gonna fill a bathtub with a ladle, are you? <laughs> the, a ladle with holes in it. It's a good idea, but no. In fact, it might be uh, a week or so before you get a chance to bathe again. Yeah. You can see Moth and Cassandra mm -hmm. shooting a soy dirty looks for interrupting, mm -hmm. but it was clearly a teaching moment. <clears throat> oh, the teaching moment has just begun. Mm -hmm. um, so they will gather their things, and the four of us will head into the fen. In you go. <laughs> um... Uh, and as we're about to leave, Devon will say, Asoy, pick that up. We need to take it with us. And he points to the troll heart on a knife. Uh, with a, like, a gleeful yip, she runs over and grabs the knife and the troll heart and carefully picks it up with one hand to catch the troll heart in case it slips. Gleeful? Yeah, like, excited. Like, this is the coolest thing that she's done. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what that is? He says once they've they're rounding the hill, passing through the vineyard. Mm, I don't know, some sort of Maybe. organ of a a big person. Maybe there are a uh, a few 
workers in the vineyard that see us go, but otherwise mm-hmm. we are out on the outskirts of civilization. Mm-hmm. Um, he looks to Cassandra or the others. Cassandra gives a, a heavy sigh and a roll of her eyes and informs the young uh, Asoy that that's the two-headed troll heart of a two-headed troll. If you l- take it off the knife and leave it, it'll grow into a full two-headed troll and tear you limb from limb. So you better not let that knife out of it. Not even for a moment. Boy, nods Although, her head in understanding. Though that is just what we uh, may need to do. If we can find another troll in the fen, all the better. Or, uh, well, all will be explained in time. At some point later in the journey, Devon will muse more on the purpose of this trip. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of you more than others, he looks to Cassandra, have seen the rise in uh, Necrot's status, specifically our tower, literally as it rises from the earth. Gems along with it, wealth, and wealth uh, beyond the wealth of the earth. My tablets, our pages of knowledge. He looks again to Cassandra, giving her giving her these pointed compliments, stroking her ego so she doesn't get too bitter by being replaced mm-hmm. by the new apprentices. Mm-hmm. It, uh, and uh, as our power grows, so does Necrot's bringing in strangers from beyond who may not all be trustworthy. It will not do to leave our wealth unguarded. That, I nod to the to the heart. They look expectantly. Will be, will be an, an offering. And the ritual, uh, and the rituals that must be performed, I yet know not. Anyways, um, let's see. It looks like it's about a two day journey to Grecos, I think, is this village here. So we will stop in there for a rest. Uh, probably some nice treatment, right? I think Devon was a local hero of Grecos at one point in time. Yes. That's... Uh, I think Grecos is where you picked up uh, Athos? No. Um, Platos. Oh, that's right. They yes. were having trouble with Platos and uh, he, they had I stopped making sacrifices and he made the creek mm-hmm. run red with blood. Um, mm-hmm. And then you took him into your well-being, fed him, and now your river runs freely through the Quanat, um, mm-hmm. flowing vigorously providing yeah. food or water and thus food to all the people of Necra and downriver. Yeah. Um, so we will enjoy Grecos's hospitality. Mm-hmm. Let my apprentices ride on my coattails. Um, if there are any small services we can offer to the people of Grecos, we will do so, but I think we stay here but a night and journey on. On you go. Uh, the next day, I suppose, you will make your way through the forest, through the hills, and arrive at the Brackish Fen. Yeah. There is that pathway you have constructed with the help of dwarves. So it shouldn't, the travel shouldn't be too challenging. Mm-mm. Hopefully it should be um, mostly easy with just a few spots where that need to be either repaired or bypassed, and then a... Um, and a, uh, we will take the time to make the necessary repairs. So maybe that slows it down to a more normal pace. Like, so if we come to a spot where the bridge is out or like the swamp has changed course or flooded over, mm-hmm. we will stop to repair the path that uh, so that others can after us. So instead of just like making our own way through as quickly as possible, we ensure right. the path is in good repair. Um, Devon puts uh, 
what's her name, Esoy, to work with her hands. Um, maybe use his own fabricate spell to rebuild boardwalks and the like. Who gets the honor of holding the heart? Um, it was initially Esoy. I think she, it stays with her unless she does something that is dangerous or would lead me to believe she's not to be trusted with it. Yeah, there's just the, you know, if she's going to be working with her hands to fix bridges, then she probably mm -hmm. can't hold the heart at the same time. No. Oh. She's she's not very effective at building bridges either. That was more uh, <clears throat> the, conti the continued uh, lessons of right. humility and uh, mm -hmm. maybe as a uh, motivation to learn her magic better so she doesn't have to work with her hands. Well, if you do not immediately present her with a solution or someone else to hand it off to when you tell her to fix things, she will take the knife and drive it all the way through the heart into whatever plank it is that she is trying to move. So the heart attaches itself to the board and then she gets into the swamp and moves it around and then yoinks it out and takes the heart over to the next board and stabs it in maybe a couple of times because she's not super strong. Um, and then picks and moves, so she stays with it. <clears throat> um, but she does take the initiative to drive the the dagger all the way through the heart, nice and hard. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Yeah. So she keeps the heart the whole time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Devon doesn't make comment, but he keeps yeah, keeps an eye on the heart. But this is yeah, she's not gonna hurt it. Right? It'll keep her growing from the largest piece. So mm -hmm. she's doing fine. At some point, looking at his uh, soggy apprentices, Devon will mention that uh, some wizards, uh, some more pampered wizards see fit to learn cantrips or conjure servants to clean their shoes and their robes. Oh, I hear what Baby thinks of those, uh, those wizards. <laughs> she is not a fan of those crappy wizards. Yeah, but I am a... Uh, I was a shepherd first and foremost, and a practical man, so I never saw the need for such things. Mm -hmm. A waste of uh, study time that could be spent more valuably. <laughs> Not sure whether to mute her or let her, let her sing. I don't, is there a mute button for her? <laughs> Does she come There's with a one? Mute, mute button for the mute button for the both of us. Ah, gotcha. Ah. Ooh, dancing baby. Ah. Okay. Well, so. eventually you make your way to uh, that flat stone area. Yeah. Uh, of As a reminder, workshop. it's... Yeah. It's uh, off the path, right? So the path right. sort of circles around it. So we reach a point where some hundreds of yards off in the fen mm -hmm. is, <laughs> is the table, the altar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sing it, girl. All right. Um, so Devon, I think, and it's designed to be inconspicuous. Yes. So there's like maybe a... Uh, an overgrown hill off to the right that the path diverts around. Mm -hmm. And it looks like, I think the boardwalk here is like, it's at a, one of the spaces where it's like walled in. There's like a railing on the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. And so you wouldn't think that there's anything. And then Devon stops and he's like, this way. Yeah, this, this way. Walk. And he like hops over railing. Huh? All right. He hops over the railing and says this way and leads the apprentices through the brush. Mm -hmm. Actually kind of gestures them forward, like covering the way behind him. He's not a mm. tracker or anything, but just like pushing the brush back so that it's not obvious that four people trudged through the swamp right. here. Right, not like stamping down the bushes, just making your way through them inconspicuously. Mm -hmm. Leaving no trace of your passing. Um, and, and as we are making this trudge through the swamp, these uh, three apprentices out here 
miles from everyone, um, Devon says, I don't think I... I don't know that it needs to be said, but none of us can speak of this place to anyone. And I think maybe stops here in the middle of the swamp and turns around, turns to face the three of them. There's a... We must, for, the, for the safety of all of us and of all humanity, we must uh, swear an oath of secrecy and loyalty. There are nodding around to gauge their reactions of heads all about. Even the normally sarcastic or talk backy Asoy is quiet and nods her head solemnly in understanding mm-hmm. of what is being asked. He looks around and uh, gauges their reactions to this. Um, sort of improvising this ritual. Like, does he actually make them swear an oath? <laughs> or is, uh, is it seem implied? And uh, I think he'll leave it at that for now. Um, very, very well then. It'll be time for uh, oaths and rites later. Secret societies. Everyone can reach the stone platform and very quickly Sa- the staircase Sandra down. Sandra has been be here before, right? I believe. I think I brought her here for something. Yeah, we talked about be- coming here to do the elemental plane stuff. Oh, In that's right. Accident, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, The forging of his elemental like. So Cassandra has been here before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the other two will... Well, it's quite subtle, right? It's like, what is this place? Like, you get to the top of the hill, and you're like, why is there a clearing here? Mm -hmm. And then you, like, walk out, and you're like, whoa, we're on a giant stone circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, um, I think we start on top. We don't find it. We don't go to the staircase quite yet. Okay. Um, the apprentices yeah. look about in the area. Cassandra, the only person who's been here before, seems a little bit more calm, while the other two are inspecting things. Uh, Asoy, with the heart, gets close to the ground and immediately speaks up about the smoothness and flatness of the rock here and how it is clearly unnatural and something has created this place. Then she looks to you and says, did you make this? talking uh yeah uh devon shakes his head that's a temporary mute button nice just got a bottle um Devon shakes his head. No. This place is older than me. Perhaps uh, older than humanity. She looks surprised. um, Impressed? Maybe in... Maybe honored? I know very little of its secrets. And he looks around to the three of them. Maybe in time your, your researches will reveal more about it. But uh, there are great magics bound to this place. And it will uh, serve as a suitable site for our summoning. Uh, The apprentices are mostly content to sit or stand and listen and observe. So he continues to make commentary on what this place might be or noticing that this area of rock over here looks maybe slightly different than that area or it's all perfectly flat. And it's not just like flat relative to itself. It's flat relative to the water level. Like this, this is, you know, impossibly smooth and perfectly oriented. Must have taken a, a wizard of great power or at least great effort to, you know, on and on. She considers. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, we'll go inside in just a moment. Uh, Devon does want to scan the swamp side around them. 
for a lucky troll. All right, let's see if there's a lucky troll. Doesn't need to be two-headed. I could replace the troll heart with a standard troll. Nope. Uh, almost as far away from the roll that you wanted as possible. You scan the area around you, and it is devoid of anything but a couple of cranes, some birds, a couple of fish. By the sheer amount of um, insects and birds going on and hooting and hollering, you feel fairly safe. There's no, like, large predators nearby, otherwise the birds would probably quiet down or chirp up in, like, a trying-to-drive-it-off method. Um, instead, the area feels very natural. Feels very, um, isolated. No sign of monsters or beasts anywhere. Alright. Well, shall we have a look inside? Devon leads the way. Mm -hmm. When I first got here, this hallway was guarded by a magic uh, fungus that fed off of life force. Perhaps it would have been prudent to leave that guard, leave that uh, in place to uh, keep overly curious uh, wizards out, but. It is now uh, open to our prying eyes and our greasy fingers. Mm. Mm. And Devon will uh, lead them in and let them have a look around. I believe the two side hallway, uh, I assume it's empty, right? Or has anything it, taken it a residence? <laughs> empty as far as you've seen so far. Um, um, do you like carefully explore it first? Or you just let them run about? Um, Devon is there with them, but mm -hmm. he does let them sort of fan out and see. I believe the two side rooms were not interesting, right? They used to be like a laboratory and maybe a library, but they've fallen into such disrepair that it's like shards of furniture and mm -hmm. yeah, completely tattered, uh, empty, tattered parchments and, and the like. Uh, and I do believe it was just the three rooms in like a cross-shaped hallway, mm -hmm. right? Enter yep. from one side, the main area is directly across, and then to the left and to the right are these two extra something rooms. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. And straight ahead is the altar with statues to Ponos and Terassa. Was there a third statue? Malchus. I do believe there was a Malchus one as well. Okay. All right, so there are three statues. Mm -hmm. And Devon lets the apprentices look around. Um, curious if they will see anything that he didn't, but uh, he will say to them, this was... Drexel's workshop. Have you heard of Drexel? They all shake yes. their heads. No. He leaves it at that. And leaves them to look around. And make any observations of their own. Uh, no, the center shrine is to Sayor, god of crafting. The sides oh, okay, are so Terasa and Ponos. Okay. There we go. There you go. No Malchus. But those are all children of Malchus, right? Um, Sayor is not. I thought Sayor was Malchus. He's and... Death and um, oh, Verasi and uh, okay. and Astaire. Okay. There we go. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, the place looks empty. Um, there are no creatures worth a note in here, other than there are now like some mosquitoes. There's some standing water in here where there's some like larvas growing. There's some more natural mold about just the, the normal insects and weather have uh, seeped in, making the place humid and sort of stinky. 
Devon will tell them uh, that they are free to study and make notes of this pl- about this place mm-hmm. while we are here, but I would uh, advise them against coming back on their own. <laughs> it is a dangerous place that may hold secrets mm. and not to mention the swamp. So we will give them uh, some leave time but I think our task will take us to the altar, or to, to, this, to the magic circle. Yes. Maybe. That is what the three of them quickly find and spend their time focusing on. They'll do a quick scan around the rest of the place to make sure that nothing's here, and Cassandra will cast a detect magic spell to try and figure out what she can about this place. The bottom will ask her what she sees. Um, she looks at the magic circle and says there's old magic here I can't tell if it's active and faint or if it's ancient and powerful and just residual but there's something here something terrible and strong uh Devon will say, Soy, give me that heart. She will take it from you. Uh, take it to you. Yeah. And Devon will remove the dagger from the heart and mm-hmm. toss it casually to the center of the magic circle. It um, will splat and roll and yeah. continue and to beat. Will... <laughs> you begin to, yeah. I don't know if it stopped beating when the knife was shoved through it but it beats again no. mm-hmm. yeah um allowing some blood to drip into the grooves of the magic circle I don't know if that does anything um but more than that he will let the troll begin regenerating and I don't know if it's going to be hours days before we have a troll again but that's what we're going to wait for the heart comes to a stop near the middle, but not in the exact center of the mm-hmm. diagram on the ground. And the blood from it quickly finds grooves and begins to pour along, reducing in viscosity and easily spreading throughout the rings of the summoning circle or the magic circle or the whatever it is down here. Mm-hmm. Um, and once it is all filled up, the heartbeat begins to quicken in pace, going from, I don't know, 60 beats a minute to 90 beats a minute. Apprentices stand in awe as bit by bit the heart grows. A little something comes off of it, like a little prong comes off of it here, another prong comes off of it there, and the four of you can watch as it slowly turns into a troll over the course of about 24 hours okay. and starts as just like a hand or like a little limb that sort of gets bigger and then splits into appendages and becomes sort of like a hand and then it gets out longer and it bends at an elbow and from the heart sort of grows the creature out of it um, for much of the time it is a twisted mutilated piece of ugly looking flesh that doesn't have much rhyme or reason to it just weird appendages and eyeball grows first in the wrong spot and then gets absorbed back again and teeth start to appear in the palm and then get absorbed as it grows and the new appendage arrives that splits into a mouth and eyes which it's a horrible sight Mm -hmm. takes about 24 hours to reach gather around to watch it um Let's see. Um, one turn, so almost two turns. Um, Devon will cast a Bands of Cerulean when the troll looks like it's a about to turn dangerous. Hmm. Although actually, mundane means of restraint might be easier, but that's fine. We'll do that. 
the band's Australian. So Seems more suitable to an offering as well. Let's talk about when Devon thinks the troll will turn dangerous, because at a certain point, it becomes more or less a troll, but like the skin and the hair aren't quite there, and the nails aren't quite there, but like the teeth are, but the eyelids are shut, you know, and it's difficult to tell what, when the troll could get up and run around and maul things. I think when it starts moving is when he's concerned, right? So when it okay. seems like it's looking like a troll, he will go up to the altar and sit and wait mm -hmm. and get ready to cast a bands of cerulean if it starts crawling towards Got anything it. or okay. yeah so you tell me does it like take the full 24 hours before it like reanimates mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. does it like get to 90 percent and it starts crawling no it will wait until it is um skinless still like the first layers of skin are growing on the outside and the nails are beginning to grow but none of the hair has gone yet when the mm -hmm. eyes flare open um and it begins to reach out with its claws and drag should, itself towards one of your apprentices should we roll for initiative or is it so useless at this point that it's not gonna you anything? can roll for initiative it's gonna have a penalty but in theory you could roll a 10 it could roll a one you know no Crazier shit has happened. Yeah, yeah, okay. 1d10 okay, so. plus 6 for troll, plus 2 for slower, not formed, 17. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it needs to make a save at minus 2. Oh! Ooh. The bands form around it and then snap away. Mm-hmm. And the and troll crawls. We might have a troll fight on our hands. It crawls towards one of your apprentices. And which one? Um, the second one, a soy. It crawls towards a soy. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, as it reaches the edge of the circle and begins to reach out for a soy, its hand hits a a solid wall at the edge of the circle of the groove where its blood has been spilled. Um, and then it tries to pull itself to its feet and push through the wall. Not doesn't really get more than, you know, past its knees, and it reaches up, hitting some sort of barrier. Interesting. Does the, uh... Does, is there stone outside of the magic circle? So, like, we can be standing on, like, a stone platform and there's, like, a magic circle in the middle? Or does the yes. magic circle... Okay. But, so I mean, it's all stone everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. The circle is not raised or lowered relative to the rest of the ground, I believe. Okay. I, I think it's all one flat room. Okay. Okay. Uh, Bands so of Cerulean looks... maybe not necessary. A little terrified when the brands of Cerulean broke and the troll crawled towards her, but in her absolute fear and terror at seeing this thing moving towards her, she didn't flinch. Not from bravery, but from fright. She stood absolutely still like the deer in the headlights as the troll clawed at the force field around it, um, only eventually breathing a sigh of relief when it's very clear that it can't get through. Devon circles around to her casually as if maybe he was expecting this to work. He definitely wasn't <laughs> for the, the magic circle. That is interesting. I, I have questions about it, but not for right now. And he will go over to scold this away. Uh, uh, <laughs> that is not a that is not a defensive posture, he says, looking at her wide eyed. Like I, I taught you, and he like <laughs> assumes the martial <laughs> arts stance she in front of the troll. She shifts her feet, um, still clutching the, the dagger in her hand, um, shakes her head clear and calms and focuses, staring at the troll, and then sort of begins to shadow box with it as it like tries to claw out and as if the attacks were gonna come all the way through. You can hear the other apprentices sort of like huffing in disgust that she would use martial techniques when they're clearly wizards and you know use magic for this situation do any of them have any combat spells in fact she's probably the only one that's researching burning hands <laughs> uh, um yes 
I think um, Cassandra has a magic, missile. magic spell? missile. Yeah, I think so. Probably memorized for this trip. Mm. Um. So, we stand around and watch, I think. Watch yeah. this troll regenerate and flail inside of this magic cage. And I guess now Devon starts wondering, like, was it the blood that created the barrier? Like, if you put a person in here and dripped their blood in the uh, in the grooves, would it seal them in? Mm. Or is it mm. like summoned creatures that can't leave or something? Mm. Is the barrier one way? Like, is Devon able to put his hand through the barrier? Would so you he- like to try? I think so. After watching it for some time and not seeing anything happen, Devon will approach like tangential to the troll. Mm-hmm. So like the trolls, if it's if it's if the troll's fighting against the barrier at some point, Devon You're will like approach ninety like degrees off of it, ninety degrees to it, so he's not like facing the troll. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I assume the apprentices are not in danger zone, or are uh, they like taunting the troll? A soy has backed up maybe ten feet from it. Um, and is still sort of shadow boxing with it. The other apprentices have sort of moved away to sort of surround the magic circle. So everyone's about like 90 degrees off from one another. Not exactly, of course, but about um, if I inadvertently, If I inadvertently break the magic circle, is there anyone in danger danger range? Trolls within 10 feet of a soy if the circle is broken and it's <clears> still <throat> clawing and as if trying to get to her. So, um, so that sounds like she's you know, in danger. I think Devon will go to be the closest one to the troll if mm. it strikes. Uh, staff in hand, he will put a hand through the barrier to see if what happens. It goes down and the troll comes immediately for you. It's time to roll yeah. initiative. Yeah. yeah. The whole yeah. thing just poof, fails, fizzles, falls apart. And um, with a roar, the troll reaches for your throat. Uh, I guess we'll try Bands of Cerulean again. Natural one. Not a chance. Okay, then. You had two. Oh, okay, never mind. Yep. Way right, another faster. Saving throw. Minus two, yeah? Mm-hmm. 13 for a two headed dice. It's going to be close. How many hit dice that. does a troll have? Warrior saves are not that great versus spell, fortunately. But I don't know if they're this. 10 hit dice. Saving throw is an 11. Ooh, so it uh, eludes the. Uh... Yes. It eludes Zig once again. Uh, the bands form troll. around the troll who shrugs them off and they snap and the troll reaches out to you. Uh, I guess we should also roll 1d10 plus one for magic missile initiative oh, was a sure. three. Um, she will open up and now it's important to know what level Cassandra is. Is she doing d4 plus one or 2d4 plus two? I don't, she's probably she, level, she's level two. Right, level two. she's got two spells, is she higher than that? Yeah. I mean, Devon leveled three times since she's been around. Right. Um, yeah, why don't you give me a D100 and we'll say she's got a 60% chance of being level two, a uh, level three, 40% chance of being level two. Um, That's level two still. Okay. Yeah. Um, so she will do 1D4 plus one damage to it. Two points of damage to the troll who has... Uh, and the Devon troll will, will Devon take will tank the troll. Yeah, our troll will reach out. Two-headed troll, plus nine to hit. Four attacks. Four. What is? What is? Does it have claw, claw, limb? bite, bite. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, the first attack, I think this is... This must be a claw. D4 plus 4 damage. 
is a... What do we have to hit? Plus nine is a 15. Nope. Second attack is a 14. Uh, The first bite is a 20. Natural 20 or just 20? Modified 20. Um, Yeah. Uh, We should place some limits on glancing blow. Um... I didn't declare it because I was casting another spell this round, but I don't, mm-hmm. can you, I don't know if you can cast it with other spells or if you can cast it more than once a round. Probably not. We said but... you could use Glancing Blow a number of times equal to your attacks of opportunity. Oh. Like, it, oh, okay. That was a, your attack of opportunity replacement. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, it would work just as an attack of opportunity, I think. So if you could either make... If you cast four glancing blows, you wouldn't then be able to make attacks of opportunity at fleeing creatures. So gotcha. Um, um, I didn't declare anything, so we can skip the glancing blow. I right. guess, I suppose. So that but, will uh, just strike you for a flat D12 damage. Uh, hits you for 10 with one bite. And the other head comes in with a natural 19 modified 28, which I believe is a so critical glance. hit. 28. Yeah, that's act- are we doing double, double crits? Have we done that in this one? I think so, I probably. Can't remember, I have 18 I so. AC. I think it's gonna bite you for 3d12 damage uh, with the second head. Not times. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That could kill me. Let me see. Martial arts too. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, it is. 27 damage. It is a 8, 9, 10 on the 3d12. Goodness gracious. Um. So the claws miss at you, but apparently they were just faints as one head comes and grabs at your, your shoulder and the other one comes and gets like right around your clavicle and your neck and takes a big bite out of you. Your blood intermingling with the troll's blood as it splashes on the floor and uh, fills the crevice around you, um, around the magic circle. We're both outside of the magic circle now, right? Yes, or like the troll is bridging the gap over the Mm -hmm. magic circle as both of your bloods begin to fill it. Yeah, let's see. my staff initiative one are you a master with it or something yes. there's some I'm sort a multi-class of class fighter there's got to be something going on there or maybe i've misread that oh it's two-handed weapon style two-handed weapon style reduces it by three yeah okay um so let's smack this troll around a bit and i will be using four glancing blows Okay. And hopefully my apprentices will do something. So let's uh, let's see what this thing's AC is like. Um, I'm only plus five to hit. Do we really not level the warrior that much? Level six warrior, is that the case? Let's see. Well, seven slash nine. So I, you're okay, one. So it should be a... I'm missing, let's see, this should be six level. Baby doesn't, baby doesn't like this troll. Mm-mm. Seems a silly way to die. It um, does, yeah. Well, I really hope you don't die so, here. Oh, oh God, I gotta have fix that shit. I can't believe I haven't... Uh, slash R D twenty plus. I think it's plus six. Let's see, natural or not a? Let's see, a twenty to hit. How much HP did this troll regenerate before it started moving? Like, does it come back at one HP or? Well, clearly not. No, it's a full missile. definitely. Yeah. Oh really? Oh gross. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. I can't fight this thing. Um, okay. Um, and then I get a free, I think I can stack the martial arts style, right? So I think I get a free mark. I think I get a free punch and a free, and a free block. Right. Um, yeah. So let me see. Staff, this is. Actually, 
actually. I beat the, the troll handling initiative, right? You rolled an initiative of four, and it rolled an 11. We had, yeah. we had talked about how I can use, like, the staff spear and my staff specialize or my my staff finesse allows me to do like a staff attack every other round while using the spear every round uh, basically yeah, yeah, made yeah. it like the pole arm master thing from mm-hmm. 5e so this will be spear damage I don't know if with two weapon fighting do I get a plus one to damage using a spear two handed or do I get right that's what I was wondering about yeah that. because weapons that can be wielded either one handed yeah. or two handed so I don't think so I think my I think my initiative was slower. Is what okay, I'm saying. Okay, but it's but still not going to be 11. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, 20 is a hit against AC 16 troll. All right, so I stab it. For minimum damage. For three. I will fist it for nine is a miss. And I back away, hoping I don't die. Actually, oh shit, I'm screwed. My armor spell was, was broken by that second hit. Ah, uh, all right. Um, let's see. Other apprentices probably should have rolled in here as well. A soy would have rolled in. At uh, I'm gonna say there's a bit of a delay because she's a little bit terrified, so she'll go last in the round. Uh, uh, Moth. Moth is not doing anything. Moth has absolutely nothing to do here. Cassandra has already used a detect mat. Well, the detect magic was yesterday. Um, oh, she guys right. would have slept. She would have memorized spells. She definitely had one magic missile. Would she have taken another detect mag? No, she. you're regenerating a troll. She's not an idiot. She'll have another magic missile. So she'll come in with a 1d4 plus one. Uh, five, there we go. You're okay, little one. And... So uh, the troll will make its claw attacks against you. Um, The first claw is in eight and nine is 17. Yeah, let me think about, well, doesn't matter. Let's let's roll low or something. No, that's a success, but it rolls lower than me. So the block doesn't work. Mm Mm-hmm. So you are going to take physical damage from this? Uh, yes, but let's read Glancing Blow. I do 1d4 at level one, maxing out, let's see, 3d4. Woo! Let's see, 2d4 at level four, 3d4 at level seven. Let's see, wait, every three levels. So one, four, seven, I think 10 would be the next one. So it reduces to 3d4 damage. Okay. Uh, the troll does four damage. No, I'm sorry, five damage. Yeah, yeah. Completely glanced. Mm-hmm. Um, how many spell slots does a? Or sorry, how many attacks of opportunity does a level seven fighter get? At least Is four, because it... you start with three, yeah. and then you'll get one every three levels, I think. Okay, so I can I can glance all of these. You sports. can glance all of them, yeah. Okay. It'll burn through your MP quickly, but you can glance them all. Yeah. Um, second attack from the troll is a four, and nine is a 13. Mm-hmm. Does that hit? I don't want to know what your AC is now that you don't oh, have your... Actually, four and 13 might actually hit. Um, I don't have armor spell. Your AC Dex, can't be 13. Martial arts. I th- I'm... I think it is. No, it's 14. Oh, I got the scarab. Okay, so it's 14. So that's a gotcha. mess. Okay. Woo! God. Um, the bite comes in at an 11 and 9 is a 20. Yep, that's a hit. It's a hit. Uh, the bite damage is a 3. Lanced. Okay, and the second bite is a 12 and 9 is a 21. And the bite damage is an eight. Oh, right. very nice. Um, okay. So that's another six. So we're looking at six. Cool, cool. How at the very any, end of the round. We don't have a health bar going. Any? Uh, oh, yeah. Let me get you a health bar then. Or you can just sort of tell me how we're looking. Uh, troll. Go. Uh, 
was like this. And then it took two. And then it took three. And then it took five. And Asoy, uh, you know, you've been telling her to use her hands and learn the mundane She'd ways of doing things. A, with a knife. So she circles around the troll and goes to stab it in the back with a dagger with a 19 to hit. Plus two for back attack is a 21. Versus a troll's 16 AC is a critical hit. Um, well done, Asoy. She will do six damage to the troll. Wow, maybe she's not a piece of shit wizard after all. She really is your your next best wizard. Cassandra's jealousy will know no bounds when the shit apprentice does more damage with the dagger than she did with her magic missiles. That's kind of the nature of magic missile. No. Um, and we will go to the next round of initiative. I think we need to redo the crit system. <laughs> the double is- crit you think is too much? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah. Um, For tides of death, and I think all future campaigns, I'm just going to use rules as written crits. Um, Shit, that's a good initiative. Uh, What do I roll? Is spear six, five, six? But you've got the two-handed style, so. But I think it's a one-handed weapon. I can't get both plus one to damage and. Oh, but you like ruined spear, didn't you? You have it do 2d4 damage no matter what. It just like gets reached. It should probably be d6 if it's a one-handed and 2d4 if it's two-handed. I think that makes oh, the most sense. That's actually a better way to do it. But... Yeah. Okay. So then should I I should do like four initiative? Sorry, three initiative? Three initiative. Mm-hmm. And just do 2d4 with no bonus. Okay, so I do win. Let's see. Oh, and, this um... troll should be regenerating a ton. Let's see. Uh, what's her name? We'll backstab at four. Ooh, she will go first. 1d20 oh, okay. plus two for back attack against the troll. She will score another nice. hit. Maybe the troll will focus on her. Ugh. Waste of a good apprentice. Um, does does the troll keep its attention on Devon? I guess I've been uh, Devon goes first. Years. So, oh, yeah. Ooh, oh, almost. Oops. The great roll. Yeah. 17 will do it. Mm-hmm. Six points of damage. That's oh right. Gosh. Cries Ooh, of joy. Fist of stone or something. Yeah. Uh, did you have a... fists, uh, fists the roll. Hit, but not a crit. Correct. All right, so for another seven, and I get a second, at- I get another attack at the end. Can so what you're making a two-handed attack with the spear and then punching it with an offhand? The, yes, because the, it's a martial arts weapon. Oh, so you can so, still make an unarmed attack even yeah. if you're using a two-handed weapon as a martial my, arts weapon. Yeah, and okay. my style. Yeah, my style as a free punch. Yeah, I assume it's just like I'm spinning a staff. Occasionally, it goes to one hand. I punch it. Mm-hmm. Two hands, stab it. Mm-hmm. At the end of the round, I'm going to smack it with the butt of the spear. Well, for the a, punch yeah. does seven. It had six HP remaining. The punch so... does one. Oh, it's like the spear. Oh. The fist so the... of stone, I thought you said. was. I, def- no, I, do. I was saying I need oh, fist of stone. I need oh. fist of stone. It's not dead okay. yet. So it's... There it is. Yeah, so it still has six HP or something. Like... Five, yeah. So close. Mm-hmm. Um, beginning on the third round is when it begins to regenerate. Nice. After taking damage, that's going to be this very next round. It's going to start to heal. All right. Um, but the troll takes I its will, turn first. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I believe uh, its bite seemed the most lethal, right? Yes. So I'll block a bite and glance everything else. Actually, they're about the same average damage. The bite has greater potential, but the claws have lower minimums. They do six and a half each. Um, so the troll will get its first claw attack. It is a 12 and nine is a 21. Uh, which will hit unless you block. Are you doing uh, I was going to block just the blo- bite. Okay. So this is being Ooh. glanced. Yeah. Two Damage. and four is six, so you will take right. two. Nope. 
No more, no crits, please. The second claw comes in with a 11 and nine as a 20, which gets glanced. It does one and four is five. We glanced. And the bite comes in with another 11 and nine is 20. Uh, You're trying to block. block. It rolled an 11. It rolled a natural 11. Uh, I don't think I can block that. I don't think I can. Actually, maybe if I roll a 10. What? O-R. Nope. Nope. Uh, yeah. And the big D12 of either lots of damage or no damage. <laughs> Sits at a six. Completely glanced. Nice. Last one. <laughs> Last one. Here we go. Uh, 14 and nine is a 23. Four, five damage. Oh, we might need to take a break mid-battle, okay. but we'll see. Let's see. So I get um, a staff attack. Mm -hmm. oh. That's mom 17. crying in the corner. 17's a hit. <laughs> yeah. Baby. Four points of damage. Uh, one off. Uh, did... No, Cassandra did not get her action this round. She already used two spells previously. Right? Um, Cassandra's... You know what? Why don't we take our break? Mid-combat? Yeah? No? We'll just do Cassandra if he's muted right now. So what is Cassandra going to do? Um, she can't let a soy show her up. But she doesn't have much in the way of weapons. She's probably got like a walking stick or something. I guess she's got a staff proficiency, so she can walk up behind and make a. So Cassandra a staff did. Attack. Cassandra did two. Um, magic missiles. Magic missiles. This is round two, isn't it? Oh no. This is round three. Okay. Yeah. The first round was. Um. Yeah. First round, Devon tried to do the. Right. Bands of Cerulean, and it failed. Yeah. And that's when she took the troll took two from the magic missile, and then okay, so she's yeah. out of magic missiles. She can try a staff. There's also is uh, you said Moth is just crying in the corner. Moth is crying in the corner. It's a 15 year old kid. This is not what they're ready for. Mm -hmm. uh, but Cassandra plus two for back attack, no other bonuses. Comes up with a quarter staff that she picked up on the way out here, and will hit for a 16. The... Bringing it down. Yeah, it doesn't even matter what the damage is because the troll is exactly at one. It'll drop to zero. It'll drop to negative something and immediately begin to regenerate. Um, and I think that's where we take our break and we'll come back on the other side with some more Dicing with Death. I can pause. 